If you commonly feel wired but tired, you feel anxious after caffeine, you suffer from estrogen dominant symptoms and PMS, and you feel worse after taking B vitamins, especially methyl B vitamins, then this video is for you. You might have a slow CMT and an MTHFR variation, and I'm going to, in this video, help you to understand what that means and the best foods, supplements, and exercise that can support this genetic combination. So let's just get started and let's talk about what is the COMT. So COMT is an enzyme and it helps to break down estrogens, stress hormones, and catecholamines like an, uh, dopamine, um, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and those kinds of things. So it helps to clear that out of your system. So that is its job. So it helps to clear, it's part of liver detox. And when your body makes its own hormones, um, we have to have a way of getting those hormones out. Otherwise, those hormones will go on and continue to activate your body to do certain things. And so like after a stressful situation, and your body makes hormones like um, dopamine and cortisol, after that stressful situation happens, your body has to have a way of getting rid of those hormones and that's what COMT helps to do. MTHFR, what does MTHFR do? So that is an enzyme that creates the raw materials for the COMT. It methylates, so it creates the raw materials that the COMT needs. So. If you, I'm gonna tell you an analogy in a minute, but if you have a slow COMT, that means your body is slower to process out estrogen, dopamine, cortisol, and other um, stress hormones like the catecholamines. If you have a slow MTHFR, that means your body is slower at making the raw materials that the COMT needs. And so it's just important that if this is you, if you experience like feeling anxiety, anxious, wired but tired, estrogen dominant symptoms, you feel worse after taking methylated B vitamins, then this, these are signs that you might have this combination, but, there's a, but don't worry because there's a lot of things you can do to support this. So let's, let me just kind of break this down, this analogy. So imagine that the MTHFR makes, supplies the materials that the COMT factory needs. So imagine a wastewater treatment plant. So that's what the COMT is doing. It's the wastewater treatment plant. It's cleaning the water. But the MTHFR supplies the cleaning supplies, the materials, the, the bacteria, the chemicals that are needed in order to clean the water. So that's kind of an analogy to help you understand how it works together. So symptoms that you might be experiencing. You could be having a lot of anxiety for no reason, just feel like you're anxious all the time. You might have PMS, like heavy PMS, a lot of like period hormone um, headaches. Uh, you just feel like bloated and anxious and hot flashes. And you could even have e even worse hormone imbalances like PCOS and just really severe uh, perimenopause symptoms. You could have histamines, like a problem clearing histamines. Um, you might be sensitive to caffeine and stimulants, and you could have sleep issues or insomnia. So if some of these are resonating, then you might want to kind of understand what your COMT does and how to support it, which is what we're gonna be doing in this video. So foods that can help support um, this, this system. MTHFR and COMT. So basically we're going to want to number one, support methylation, MTHFR, and number two, support the COMT with the nutrients that it needs. So let's start with supporting methylation because that's more upstream. We need B12, which you can find in eggs and salmon and um, other like mushroom, not mushrooms, uh, seaweed, sorry. Uh, so you can have B12 is found in those foods, uh, folate, which is found in leafy greens, citrus fruits, and cruciferous vegetables. It's found in a lot of green foods. Uh, betaine, which is found in beets. So if you can incorporate some beets into your diet, like 
I really love beets. I think you should give them another chance. You can just get canned beets or you can make them your own. You can buy some fresh ones and roast them, but give it a chance because they're actually really delicious and they're really good for your methylation, for your MTHFR. And then cruciferous vegetables, which supply sulfur and folate and uh, so many good things to help you to detox things like estrogen. So, and then there's one particular mineral that the COMT needs, and that is magnesium. So it's a magnesium dependent enzyme. So you need to do two things. You need to support methylation with B-complex, glycine, uh, betaine, and you need to support your COMT with magnesium, like magnesium glycinate. Supplements. So supplements that can help, it kind of goes along with everything we've talked about. So the B-complex, especially B2, B6, B12, B9, which is folate. But you wanna be careful because you don't want the methylated forms, which means they're already active because um, that could push your COMT, like you're gonna get this buildup of methylated B vitamins that your COMT can't use like as fast. And so you could feel even more anxious, jittery, overwhelmed, frustrated. Another supplement, glycine. You can get this from collagen. You can take a glycine supplement like trimethylglycine, TMG. You could also take calcium D-glucarate, which helps to detox that estrogen that could be building up, especially if you have you know, a lot of hormonal imbalances, PMS, PCOS, that can help, but that's something that you wanna make sure that you check with, like don't just go ahead and take it. I would get like some help to know if that's the right thing for you. Uh, taurine is also something, it's a supplement that not only helps your bile flow, but it also helps to calm your nervous system down, so taurine. And then of course, magnesium glycinate, is a good magnesium source to support your COMT. Things that you want to avoid when it comes to supplements. You want to avoid methylated B vitamins or high doses of B vitamins because again, that can cause like a buildup of these materials that your COMT factory can't use and we don't want to have that buildup. And then stimulants, so caffeine, um, those kinds of things. And let me just back up, I want to talk about some foods that you want to avoid if you have a slow CMT. So caffeine, green tea, which can actually slow down your COMT. Quercetin, which is can have a lot of um, catecholamines, like it has catechols, which helps to produce more of those catecholamines, putting a bigger load on your COMT. Alcohol, just because that depletes methyl groups, so we don't want to be depleting our methyl groups any kind of phytoestrogens, so like soy and different foods that are gonna have a lot of uh, like flax, things that are gonna have like phytoestrogens or plant estrogens that could build up, con contribute to your estrogen um, supply. And then pre-workout drinks or like stimulating pre-workout powders and drinks, you probably want to avoid that because you, that's gonna give you more anxiety. Exercise, let's move on to what are the best exercises if you have this combination. So the goal for you, if you have this combination of a slow MTHFR, slow COMT, is you want to feel steady, strong, and recovered. You do not wanna go for exercises that are going to make you feel amped up, depleted, and wired. So you want things that are just gonna make you feel good in the moment, it's gonna, just help you feel alive and strong and recovered. And so some of those things are strength training at a moderate level. So there's all different kinds of like perceived rate of exertion. So when you perceive your rate of exertion when you're doing exercise, you wanna be sort of in the middle ground. You don't wanna be overdoing your exertion because that can increase your stress hormones and your catecholamines like uh, dopamine and um, epinephrine and norepinephrine, things like that. So strength training in a moderate uh, perceived rate of exertion. Zone two cardio. So these are like things that you can do and not lose your breath. So you can still be breathing through your nose or you can talk comfortably, 
when you're in zone two, and that something like that is gonna be walking. Walking would be an example of a zone two cardio. Yoga, mobility, stretching. Don't underestimate the power of yoga and mobility and how that has such a positive impact on your body. You know, you might think that, well, I don't feel worn out after I do yoga or mobility, but that's the goal for you. You don't wanna feel worn out when you're done working out. Breath work, so what is breath work? It's simply bringing your attention to your breath and learning how to breathe slowly. And this helps to regulate your nervous system and brings your stress hormones down, especially when you're feeling stressed out. Breath work can be really important. And if you do like HIT, like a high intensity interval training, then you wanna limit it or do shorter workouts. So something that's not gonna just completely wear you out and wear you down. So maybe a couple times a week or shorter. So make sure that you fully recover. Like HIT is supposed to be high intensity interval training. So you're supposed to work out as hard as you can for 30 seconds and then rest for like two minutes. And um, one of the ways that you could do this, you could practice is actually sprints. Sprints would be good for you. So you run as hard as you can for 20 to 30 seconds and then you recover for maybe two to three minutes, and then you repeat that about five times, or three to five times, three to eight times, something like that, whatever works for you. The kind of exercises that you want to avoid are daily hit, not doing hit every day, not doing like long um, stretches of hit, or not recovering fully when you're doing the hit. Fasted cardio, because that raises your stress hormones. Late evening workouts because that can leave you really amped up and it's going to uh, cause you to not be able to sleep. It's going to increase that problem if you're already having that problem and under fueling your workout. So if you're not fueling adequately before your workout, then you probably are going to be raising your stress hormones while you're working out. And then <clears throat> that slow COMT is going to have more work to do and it could have a backlog and just it's harder to you know, there's more work for it to do. So let's just run through a sample day. So what might a sample day look like? And before we kind of get into that, if you have an MTHFR variation, if you have fatty liver or no gallbladder and you're looking for support like this with more education and more hands-on, like what do I eat meal plans, check out Metabolism Tune-Up, which is my premium program. It helps women with fatty liver, no gallbladder, or an MTHFR variation. Learn how to balance your blood sugar, support your hormones, support your liver, support methylation through food and healthy habits. So you can find the link below and um, check it out. So let's start with, let's go back to a sample day. What does a sample day look like? So if you like to work out in the morning, um, you eat something within a few minutes or like a few minutes of waking up. You can have your coffee, make sure you eat first and then Okay, my son keeps trying to call. And then you would do a workout. Maybe you would strength train, maybe you do a short hit, maybe you do walking. And then you would fuel with protein and greens and fiber and carbs afterwards. You would want to make sure that you're fueling. So every meal you wanna be getting protein and greens at every meal so that you're getting folate and you're getting B12 and you're getting, um, magnesium and minerals and the foods that you're are going to support methylation and MTHFR and uh, COMT. Supplements. So supplements you could take would be magnesium glycinate at night. You could do a non-methylated B complex in the morning and you could take taurine which helps calm your nervous system. You could do that um, maybe lunch or before bed. And then you could work on walking after meals if weight loss is your goal. I mean, walking is so good. It's just so good for so many things, your mental health, just moving your lymph fluid for detox, just feeling good, getting into nature. So walking like for 10 minutes after meals and then limit your caffeine. If you're gonna have caffeine, limit it so that you stop drinking it at around noon. And then really like th uh, think about a different caffeine source. Like if you drink green tea, or if you're consuming matcha, that's probably not the best thing for you because that green tea, the compounds in green tea can slow down your COMT even more. Okay, so if you are dealing with MTHFR and a slow CM, so COMT, there's just a few extra steps that you would take. So you would still, the, the bulk and the main focus would be supporting your MTHFR 
with a few extra things like just making sure that you're not adding extra like extra estrogen extra stress hormones and you're supporting that cmt with magnesium glycinate so i hope that was helpful and again if you are looking for a program that can help you with this kind of deeper knowledge about genetics and detox and methylation and life without a gallbladder check out my my premium program metabolism tune-up where it's a video course so you'll watch some videos You'll print some things, you'll follow the meal plan, and before you know it, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna, your mood's gonna be better, you're gonna be sleeping at night, and then weight loss is gonna come as a natural side effect of that. Thanks for joining, guys.